lot. Kasi at least alam namin na may have challenges in life. And, you know, sinasalit yung prayers na. So, obviously, may pakailam sa amin si God. Which is a good thing. When I look in And uh, marami din yung prayers. It's like watching the night sky. And I think the last ten years has been uh, very oh, there's so much they hold. And just like them old stars, I see that you've come so far to be right where you. How old is your soul? Well, I won't give up on us, even if the skies get rough. I'm giving you all my love. I'm still looking up. When you're needing your space to do some navigation. So, I met her through her friend who uh, was my girlfriend at the time. And um, she wanted, uh, I guess the, my then girlfriend wanted to find out if I was good, if I was good fit for her. So, we went into a three way call. Uh, she called me and then uh, Paige was on the other line as well. Like, Paige, this is JC. Oh, and by the way, uh, he's also going to Canada. That's one of the first things that we have to That's how I met her. I met her in person a few months later when we all went on a, I think it was a quadruple date. Uh, so, I met JC actually when I was 14 years old. Um, yeah, 14. <laughs> so we met, uh, in, I was in high school, I actually attended an all-girls school, so he was dating my best friend at that time. <laughs> so, um, I guess in the group, parang ako yung, yung, you know, the person that they would always ask for advice. So I remember my friend, she said, Oi, there's this guy na gusto kong ligawan. Gusto kong ipakausap sa'yo, tingnan mo kung okay siya. Sabi ko na. So, ang nangyari, you know, it was actually summer, so wala kami school. So, we had a three-way phone call. And then, you know, usap pa yung landline three-way phone call dun eh. So, we had a three-way phone call, tapos, um, yung friend ko at that time sabi niya, Oh, JC, meet Paige. Uh, pupunta siya ng Canada at one point kasi mga po nandun na. And JC, uh, Paige, meet JC. Pupunta din siya ng Canada at some point. So that was like one of our common, uh, that's uh, parang similarity na namin talaga kasi both our uh, moms were already in Canada. That was, we kind of knew that at some point we were going to migrate here. Oh, um, yeah. She is very intelligent. She, she, she can speak. She can speak very well. And um, she speaks to me very well. It doesn't really happen because she she speaks very well to a lot of people, but to me it's different. Like her and I connected in such a way that uh, I don't think I found with anyone else. That's for sure. Another thing is she is actually very beautiful. Very beautiful. Very beautiful. First impression of him. Um, well, we really connected intellectually, um, meaning ako kasi I like deep talks and you know, meaningful conversations. And we really connected in that level. So he was very easy to talk to. Um, I felt like, uh, you know, he was a classy person. <laughs> so those were my first impressions. And ultimately, I just felt like, um, yeah, he was, a, like, he was a good guy. Like, I just had like that. That feeling right away, nice. Good, good quality, high value type of boy, man. <laughs> boy, bed, man, now, you know. <laughs> we. <laughs> I'll start off with the day. 
but the day started off with I wanted to see her because I knew she was leaving for Paris. And she was going to have a party with her friends like towards the end of the night just to celebrate her before she left. So we wanted to meet up. I don't remember the time, but it was around, say, afternoon. Uh, we went to us, I think it was a 7 Eleven, I forget, I think it was a Mr. Minimart or whatever. And uh, we met each other there. And the first thing we did was uh, to buy flowers because we were going to go to my dad's grave. We bought flowers, she actually bought the flowers. <laughs> we went to the mall and I went to the flower shop. And I, and I told her, oh, this, is, this flower is nice, I'm going to leave it for my dad. Okay. For it. And she was like, ah, oh, okay. <laughs> so she, she paid for her flowers, which I am very thankful for. And we took a jeep and we went to the cemetery. And um, he went to go see my dad because he just passed a few months before our first day. And we stayed in the cemetery. Um, uh, she, she signed for me. Uh, we talked about, you know, a lot of things. Uh, with regards to how it's going to be in the future, you know, how our friendship was at the moment. And um, yeah, that was our first, uh, first date. First date. Um, okay, this is actually an ongoing joke between us. Because, because of our friendship and, and our romance, parang where does our story really begin, right? Like, yun yung parang hindi kami sure. So, even before when uh, he had like feelings for me, pero hindi siya exactly reciprocated. The very first time that we kind of joke around na that was really our first date was actually at the cemetery. <laughs> yeah. Um, as I mentioned, diba, his father passed away. And maybe a few months after that, um, so, you know, we decided to hang out because I was going to go to Canada and my great home. So he decided that he wanted to take me to his father's grave. <laughs> so we had our first date in the cemetery. Um, but it's actually kind of romantic because, well, maybe not, depending sa perspective. Because para feeling ko medyo hostage din ako noon. <laughs> so, hindi kasi ako talaga pala, pala labas ng bahay. So, wala akong idea sa mga commute, commute you know, yung alam ko ng commute papuntang school, pa-uwi, yung ganun lang. Eh, taga Vito Cruz ako, siya taga Paranaque. So, I have no idea about Paranaque, how to get there, how to get back home. So, I remember, um, dinala niya ako to the uh, cemetery, you know, we were visiting his dad. Um, and hanggang sa doon, gumabi na. <laughs> gumabi na. Tapos sabi niya, oh, I wanna hear you sing, kasi I've never heard you sing. I I not I don't like I have no idea how to you know commute. So eventually, um, uh, so you know we were singing to each other in the graveyard, um, and that was our first day. What was the song? Um, I yung kinanta niya sa akin is more than words. By Westlife, or you know, I see why he's so bad at her. That was the song that he sang to me. That was the song that I sang to him was a song by A1. Um, I don't know, uh, like a rose? Indeed, like a rose. Yeah. Forever in love with you. It was so funny because I actually was thinking of a different song. Tas talaga ko nakin nakanta ko na siya. Sabi ko, oh shoot, bakit forever in love with you lyrics na to? <laughs> so yeah, that's that's the first thing. It was 2012. I'd like to say it's 2012. It was 2012. It was in April. April or May. It was around that time. And we went to Niagara. Niagara Falls in, in Ontario. And uh, I didn't have a ring. <laughs> I didn't have money for a ring. I wanted to get her a ring afterwards. But, uh, but uh, even though I didn't have the ring, I told her I loved her very much and I wanted to spend the rest of my life with her. And uh, I asked her if she could marry me. Despite not having a ring, she said yes. <laughs> so, yeah. 
I don't think he planned it. <laughs> it was very casual. So we've been dating for less than a year actually. But we've been friends for a long time. So this was already in Asakana and um, I was 20 years old when, when he proposed. So we've been friends for a while and I remember I was living in Alberta kasi and he was living in uh, Toronto. So it's a long distance relationship. Siya. So I remember when I first visited him in Toronto, um, you know, like say say namin, we went to Niagara Falls, tapos we went to like we were just touring Toronto, you know, like parang you know, lovey dovey, first time traveling together, tas long distance pa, nakita kami. And then pabalik na kami na hotel. I remember I started running sa hallway. That's why I'm medyo natutuwa kami dun sa scene na yun. Um, Cause I started running the hallway, so I go, oh, bulin mo ko. I was <laughs> like, bulin mo ko, yung parang pabebe ka. <laughs> so, we were running the hallways, tapos, uh, I remember we were just laughing so much, like we were just having a good time. So, magpasok namin sa room, he just started having like conversation, like, so, I actually forgot kung ano na yung mga pinagsasabi niya. But it was like, I guess, like, oh, you know, we're having so much fun, parang, this is nice that we're together. I have no idea kung ano na yung mga sinabi niya. All I remember is, next thing I know, it was like, you know, he just asked, do you want to get married? So, no rings, no nothing, and I just started bawling my eyes out, and I said yes. That's how we, yeah, that's how we go. My favorite thing, oh, she pushes me. She pushes me to do things that I would otherwise not. I'm a homebody. I like staying at home. I really don't like going out. I don't like going to, to like uh, hiking and running or these things. I could go to the gym by myself, but you know, I've never had a person push me so hard that it actually improved. So that's one of my most favorite things about her. Is she pushes me, and uh, she—I know she honors me. She honors me in the things that I do. Uh, she, I know she's very proud of me. I don't think there's anyone on the face of the planet that's more proud of me than her. And I think one of the, the things that I love about her the most is uh, we always connect. There's there's never a day where it's like I don't want to talk to you. It's uh, we always have something to talk about. I love that. About her. Uh, my favorite thing about him. You know, um, <laughs> when I met him, even as friends, he's always believed in me. So I think maybe that's like a, a thing that we both recognize in one another. Na parang, uh, what other people might not recognize in him, <laughs> I recognize uh, in him. And what I don't necessarily recognize in myself or other people, he recognizes that that in me. So I've always felt like he believes in the highest version of myself even though that may not have existed then. Um, so I felt like he's, he's always been my number one supporter. Uh, lahat ng dreams ko, he supports it. And in fact, because we got married early, hindi pa ka college when we got married. He actually was the one who put me through school with um, his commissions. He, was, he wasn't working a uh, regular job, na salary. He was working uh, by co by commission, so like whatever he earns every sale, right? And he paid for my tuition fee by that through that. So this was no kasal na kami. Um, yeah, he supports me in every, in all my dreams. Uh, tapos, I think another thing na parang yin yang namin. He is extremely positive. Like, like sometimes I'm like. I just want him to be realistic, you know? But he's like super positive. So it's nice to say you need that, that that type of person in your life where they see the good in everything um, despite, you know, all the things that we've been through together. So, um, yeah. And he's also a really wonderful dad. Um, definitely, you know, top-notch husband. Um, I think we have that uh, chemistry na we do feel is, is special. Yes. Um, for the last 10 years, 
was about finding ourselves. We we went from city to city in Canada. We went to Toronto, Edmonton, Calgary. Um, we transferred, I think, five or six times with our kids and our grandkids. And it was about finding your home, uh, finding yourself. You know, I think the next ten years will be about growing. Uh, we've already been planted where we are, so that means it's time for us to start growing around, start building a deep expansion of our lives. That's what the next ten years. I don't know. <laughs> Actually, don't know. So, I used to be a girl who plans everything. I remember in high school, I was always the single one. Among the group of friends, I was the single person all the time. Like I said, she first, first and last. Month. But somehow in my my brain, I was like, oh, I wanna get married early. Don't know how. I don't have a boyfriend. Don't know to who. Um, and I want to have my kids by you know all my kids by the time I'm 30. Just because you know like I, I value you parang kasi no pagyap na medyo malak kasi yung age gap ng ng parents ng mom ko sa akin. So I I just wanted like a a closer age gap with my children. So I you know at that time I had like a plan. So kasal na ako and may anak na ako by 24. <laughs> and then I'll have all my kids by 30, I'm done having kids. Uh, and not knowing how in the world that's gonna happen, but that was like big picture idea of my dreams. It wasn't, I wasn't really career focused, I was very family focused. <laughs> so that was my dream growing up. Um, and all of them came true. So now actually it's interesting that you ask me what I envision for the next 10 years because I've reached a point in my life where I, actually really don't know um, but when I think about it in 10 years I'll be 41 years old they'll be 42 my oldest will be gosh 16 <laughs> and my youngest will be um, oh my gosh, 13 years old in 10 years so I would just I guess my vision at that time is I'm sure we'll have our home here in the city it's going to be built then. Um, it's in the process of being built now. So by 10 years, I'm sure we've built lots of memories there. Um, and I guess now our focus is really just building that relationship with our children, making sure that even though when they're teenagers, you, you know, we're still close and they'd be open to us. Uh, that I think that's our biggest dream right now is to really cultivate that relationship with our kids para they grow up having what we didn't have, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, that would be the, the dream come true. Yeah. Hard thing. <laughs> yeah. That would be the biggest dream right now. Can you sit down properly for this? Preach. You are, I firmly believe, to be the very best and most long-lasting gift God has given. You have given me the best years of my life, and I wouldn't change anything throughout the course of our time together. Not one thing. I need you, and I want you, and I love you very much. You are my sun, my water, my strength, and the other half of my very being. I look forward to our life together after our 10th anniversary. Surprises, challenges, failures, victories. I would gladly face them all with you right next to me. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you stay, I will stay. Wherever you are, I will. Stay with me, my certainty. Yes. <laughs> I think that's the biggest sweetheart, babe, my best friend, my Baba mga nickname sa'yo, uh, doctor, because we used to ask him advice all the time, so it's like our therapist, our doctor, um, you know, I just want to say thank you for, for the love that we share. Um, I'm super grateful for the life that we've built together. 
I really, you know, like I, I never really envisioned myself having this type of life. Like, it sounds cliche, but I feel like I'm living a good life. Um, you know, like coming from a broken family. You and I both came from a broken family. It was always our dream to have a happy family. And not just that, but even the freedom that we have with our jobs, um, the financial stability that we're blessed with right now. It all feels like a far-fetched dream before. And I'm just glad I'm living this life with you. And I'm excited to see what our life will be. Um, yeah, you know, you know how I feel about you. Um, uh, I am very grateful. I love this life that we're living. I love you. I'm so grateful for you. And I'm sure the kids also appreciate that we have this bond together, that we love each other this way, and that we love our kids the way that we do.